Generally, mounting the camera on the right ocular is the most convenient because of the asymmetry of the camera's lens position. In the second generation or universal model of the Oculocam system, there are two devices provided for mounting the camera on the ocular. The original ocular mount uses the chrome ring of the removable 10x ocular of the Hogstrite 900 for support. The new universal T-bolt ring clamp uses the ocular itself or the knurled ring behind it depending on the slit lamp model. For through the ocular photos, the program mode is selected. That is the center position on the Canon SD1400. Set the camera for infinity and turn off the flash manually. A little optical zoom, usually about 1.8 times, will diminish vignetting by filling the LCD screen and should be dialed in with the optical zoom lever before positioning the camera. That will establish the camera's lens barrel position before aligning it with the slit lamp's ocular. It may be necessary to loosen the tripod screw and adjust the camera horizontally for accurate alignment of the camera lens with the ocular. Make sure and separate the camera from the ocular after taking the picture so that the lens barrel does not strike the ocular on retracting. Remember, use distance settings, not macro, as the joystick, not the camera, does the focusing. Don't forget to defeat the flash. There are two types of photos taken through the ocular. First, there are photos of the cornea or anterior chamber subjects using the slit beam directly, and then there are photos using the slit beam to create a red reflex from the retina. Let's start with surface photos. In the subjects lighted directly with the slit beam, it is usually desirable to add a little external illumination with a single LED light. That light can be clipped to the headband on the side of the eye to be photographed. Rotate the band just below the button in a clockwise direction to get a steady light. That light will illuminate the background so that the slit beam can be focused on the pathology, either directly or through backlighting. Position the beam relative to the lesion either lighting it directly or with backlighting. Rough focus with the joystick until the image is clear and centered. Then it is helpful to lock the focus by pressing the shutter release halfway down and fine tune the focus with the joystick just before taking the picture. Make sure the servo autofocus is turned off as it interferes with fine focus in these images. Here are several examples. This is a central corneal lesion immediately after debridement with 20% alcohol placed in a 4 millimeter well. Here is the same cornea shown three days later just after removing the bandaged lens. Finally, this carefully focused and magnified image shows the residual haze in Bowman's membrane. This embedded vegetable foreign body stimulated vascular ingrowth. Here is a small residual rust ring from an iron foreign body. This leaking bleb shows best with stain in a Seidel test of the bleb's surface. Pits on the lens show up in the slit beam. Pay close attention to focus with the joystick to get this level of resolution. The small fragment of retained cortex lights up in the slit beam at the limbus. Rose Bengal stains the cornea and the debris. The slip beam illuminates the ruptured sutures against the dark pupil background. This patient has a partially de-enervated cornea from a stroke. This patient was struck by his puppy's claw to create an abrasion in the center of his graft. In some very subtle corneal lesions such as anterior membrane dystrophies or punctate lesions, oblique lighting with a slit beam and or the side light will often work best. This subtle anterior membrane dystrophy was illuminated by specular reflection from the slit beam and side light way out to the side. Precise focus is critical. This oblique slit beam somewhat exaggerates this anterior membrane dystrophy in this photo. 
The swirl dystrophy was best highlighted by a soot beam swung out almost parallel to the corneal surface. Red reflex images are achieved by bouncing the slit beam light off the retina and picking up the image in the reflected beam. Capsule opacity show up well with this method. A photo of the capsule clouding will support the need for treatment when the patient has disabling glare symptoms even though the acuity is still good. The position of the toric lens can be confirmed accurately with post-op red reflex photos providing the pupil dilates well enough to see the index marks. Corneal or lens precipitates often show best in the red reflex. For some reason, the pigment epithelium of the iris adhere to this routine circular anterior capsule opening. In this interesting case, the iris shows chafing from an intraocular lens despite the position of the lens completely within the capsule. This Grather scroll flex lens was implanted in the sulcus 29 years ago as a secondary implant and was well tolerated. Progression in this traumatic cataract was documented with serial photographs.